We're gonna go ahead and rebuild this caliper. To get the piston out, I'm just, I have everything still hooked up so I can just press the brake pedal and the piston will pop out, it'll push, and then the whole thing will disconnect. Now I'll just press the brake pedal until the piston pops out. This is as far out as the piston will go. It's starting to leak a little bit and hopefully this is far enough where we can kind of wiggle it out. Now we'll go ahead and disconnect the brake line. Once we get this out, I do want to cap it just to make sure that we don't drain the entire master cylinder because if we drain the entire master cylinder out of brake fluid, we could get air introduced into the system. I've got a piece of wood that I use just to plug this hole. You can also use a pencil and that'll keep all the brake fluid from leaking out. Now that we have this out of the car, it's definitely a lot easier to work on. Now from here, I'm just gonna try to wiggle out the piston. I can feel it shaking back and forth and it's about to pop out. It's just a little bit of suction holding it in. You can see how close it is. That rubber boot, I think is what's holding it. And there it is. There's the piston. Let's go ahead and take out the banjo bolt and the caliper hose. We have a new hose here and an old hose. I'm gonna take the old hose and just take this wire here, carefully run it through, just to feel if there's any blockages in the hose. Carefully take it through, we don't wanna puncture the side. We actually have it um, sanded down just to make sure that tip won't hurt anything, and it just flowed through real easy. And we can pull it back through, and just kind of as a control group, I'm gonna test it on the new one as well. And that flows through about the same. The hose is not the problem, and if you look at the piston here, I can definitely tell there's just a bunch of dirt on it. It's really dirty, and also in here, it's not clean, and this boot is just in terrible shape. So let's go ahead and get to rebuilding. This. Here's our rebuild kit. Comes with our new boot, the wire, and some other pieces. This was like two dollars and fifty cents compared to like thirty-five or even eighty-five if you get your new caliper locally. So it's a pretty good price compared to the caliper. Now we can go ahead and take out this wire. It's the thing that's holding all this rubber boot in. You can tell that this one's not in too great shape. That's why we have a new one. Now this rubber boot should come out a bit easier. Now I'm just working this rubber boot out and finally got it to start to come out now. And there it is, the rubber boot, which is not in very good shape. Now we'll just go ahead and scrape some of this scale off, get the major stuff off, and then we'll get the rest with the wire wheel. And we'll go ahead and clean up the piston. This polishing wheel really cleans the piston up nice. Now all we need to do is clean up the inside of the caliper there. I have everything else cleaned up. We have all the major scale cleaned off of the caliper. You can see it's kind of shiny. Clean that up on the wire wheel. The piston here is buffed. It's nice and smooth. That is looking really nice. And then we have our parts for our rebuild kit right Here's here. Here's the old seal in here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and I'll set it right above the new one, and this is what we're gonna replace it with. And we're gonna take this pick and get in there and make sure we scrape the edges, make sure there's no crud in there, make sure everything is very clean, and then we're also probably gonna take a toothbrush and really scrub the inside of the cylinder here. Now I'm gonna take some kerosene, and with a toothbrush, scrub that around in there. I wanna make sure it's everywhere, and then I'm also gonna go in here with a piece of Scotch-Brite just to really clean everything up. Now I'm just cleaning the inside here with Scotch-Brite, making sure we're getting all the crud out. And if you look in there, it is much, much cleaner. I'm gonna take that toothbrush in there again and just make sure I got everything out. We'll be using DOT3 brake fluid as a lubricant. I'll pour a little bit into a smaller container here. We're gonna put this new seal in. I'm just gonna kinda dip it in the brake fluid just to get that lubricant on it. Now we'll go ahead and put this seal in place. 
Might be a little tricky to get it to go in. I got the seal to go in real easy, actually. It wasn't very hard. I just kind of squeezed it, moved it in, and maneuvered it around, and I got it to fit in there actually pretty easy. This new rubber seal here slides over the new piston. You want to be careful here with the new rubber seal and just carefully work it around the piston, just like that. This edge right here on the rubber boot is gonna slide in right here, up and around on the caliper. So we're gonna go ahead and push this in. Now we're gonna slide this in, and it definitely slides a lot easier now. I can just feel it slide right in place. It definitely wasn't that easy to get out. With a wooden stick or with your fingernails, you can slowly push this boot into place on the caliper. You definitely do not want to use metal and just slowly work it around. You do not want to puncture the rubber boot in any way. I took a little dowel rod and flattened the end of it so it's kind of like a flathead screwdriver and I'm just using that to push this into its final place. Now I take this piece of wire and I'm just kind of squeeze it down and carefully, because it is metal, we don't want to puncture the rubber. And I'm going to slowly press it into here. It's going to take some maneuvering to get it in place. I'm just continuing to push that in with this wooden stick. Make sure it's fully seated in there. So I got that all pushed in and everything is I think we have the entire kit in there. If I take like the end of a Bic pen, I can take this and push the cylinder out and it's very smooth. And then whenever I push it back in, I can just do it by hand and it goes in very smooth. That's, that's really nice. It definitely wasn't moving that smooth before. This old hose is fine. It doesn't have any blockages, but since we have a new hose here, we're gonna put it on anyway. We got these new crush washers here. We can put these on. Make sure everything is nice and fresh. Now let's go ahead and thread our bolt in right here for the banjo. Everything's ready to go back together, but before we do that, while we're in here, we're gonna replace the brake pads because they're in really bad shape, and also the rotor, which is not in very good shape as well. There's a lot of different ways to change the brake pads and the rotors. Um, I've seen a lot of mechanics have a lot of different methods, but I think I found a method that's really fast and it's probably the most efficient. It's definitely my favorite method. All you have to do is snap. And you can see these brakes and rotors are done and complete and they look really nice. Now we can go ahead and put the caliper on. I'll slide it over our new brake pads and then this hose will swing around and go through here. This clip will hold it in place. I can take out this wood plug we have in here that's keeping all the brake fluid from leaking out. And we'll start threading everything together. This clip needs to be squeezed down a little bit. Over time it's stretched. So I'm just gonna take these pliers and carefully bring it back down to its original size and then we can clip it in place. Much better. And now we'll just tap it in place. There it is. Now we'll go ahead and tighten up the brake line. Now we'll go ahead and put the guide pin bolts in. And we'll also put the bottom one in. Everything is on and together. We're gonna go ahead and pump the brake and make sure that that piston really pushes these together. Now I'm going to pump the brake and make sure that the piston releases. It should clamp and then release and it should spin just as freely as it is now. And the piston release just like it should, and this spins nice and free after I just pump the brakes. Way better than what it was doing before. We'd pump the brakes and it would be so tight, I could just barely spin this. I can spin it no problem right now. And now we can go ahead and bleed the brakes. That's how you do a rebuild kit on a caliper. It was a little bit more work, but for $2.50, I'd say it's worth it. You can get a new caliper for about $35, but $2.50 for basically a brand new caliper I say it's worth it. Everything is functioning properly. It feels great. Brakes are working and 
it's not going to wear our brake pads down and our caliper is no longer seized. So I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.